On today's show, the US government comes to an agreement on a bipartisan infrastructure deal that includes $15 billion of investment in electric vehicles. Tesla announces that it's going to have an AI investor day where we're going to learn lots of cool things about its autonomous vehicle tech. And we get to the bottom of what happened when a Tesla taxi service was shut down in New York. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in New Zealand. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. Ever since the inauguration of President Joe Biden in the US earlier this year, there's been very little evidence of bipartisanship on Capitol Hill, with Republican lawmakers all but sworn to block any Democratic bills introduced to either house. But this week, the first true signs of bipartisanship occurred when lawmakers from both sides of the aisle came together on an agreement about a joint infrastructure bill worth nearly one trillion US dollars. If passed, it would include $15 billion of spending for charging infrastructure and buying both electric school and transit buses. It's far from the $174 billion originally proposed by the president, and it wouldn't include any EV tax credits. However, President Biden has said he'll only sign the bill if Republicans agree to a second bill passed through reconciliation that would likely add additional funding for EVs as well as tax credits. The day after celebrating the breakthrough, many Republican lawmakers say they're angry about that stipulation though, so anything really could happen. Volvo has announced a new joint venture with fellow Swedish firm Northvolt to develop and produce electric car batteries for the firm's planned range of EVs. The partnership will include both research and development into new battery chemistries that are more sustainable and more affordable to produce, as well as build a brand new gigafactory with an annual production capacity of 50 gigawatt hours of battery cells per year. That facility is not due to begin cell production until 2026, but in the interim, Northvolt has agreed to produce 15 gigawatt hours of battery cells for Volvo at its ET battery plant in Schleifta, Sweden. Since Northvolt already has an established battery recycling program in effect, we can expect Volvo to make use of Northvolt's closed loop recycling system, something that will reduce demand on raw materials and improve the carbon footprint of all of Volvo's electric cars. Remember, much of an EV carbon footprint comes from its manufacturing. Last week, we told you that Germany's transport minister was in talks with Tesla to convince it to open up its supercharger network to non-Tesla cars. And this week, we've got confirmation that that will happen in Norway from next year. According to a council meeting that happened in Norway earlier this month, Tesla has applied to receive funding to help expand five of its supercharger sites. However, that funding is only available to charging stations that are open to all electric cars, something Tesla currently does not support. Tesla has stated in its application that it will open up the sites in question to allow other EVs from other brands from the third quarter of next year. And on condition that remains true, the council has provisionally agreed total funding. Since Teslas in Europe all use CCS, which is the European-wide charging standard of choice, we do remain hopeful that this will actually come to pass. So watch this space. While many of us tend to focus on the benefits of autonomous vehicle technology on the automotive world, the impacts that self-driving vehicles could have on the trucking industry are equally huge. And this week, we learned that Too Simple, a startup that has been working on self-driving technology for big rigs for many years, successfully completed a real-world test, hauling a truckload of watermelons from Arizona to Oklahoma. According to the company, while a human drove the first portion of the trip from Nogales to Tucson, and the last part of the trip, 
from Dallas, Texas to Oklahoma, the majority of the rest of the route was fully autonomous. In total, the autonomous driving system took care of more than 950 miles, 1,529 kilometers, and completed a trip in 14 hours and six minutes. That is a major improvement on the 24 hours plus that most truckers would take due to mandatory rest periods. The Audi e-tron and Audi e-tron Sportback may only be a few years old, but Audi is rumored to be already planning a major mid-cycle refresh that the company hints might give both cars significantly longer legs. At least that's according to anonymous sources from Audi, who told Autocar this week that both variants of Audi's first long-range EV will get facelifts, improved interiors, and more efficient motors and battery packs. This will give them ranges in excess of 373 miles, 600 kilometers per charge. Despite the improved update planned, which if it happens will happen in the second half of next year, Autocar's source said that Audi plans to retire both cars as early as 2025 when a new flagship Audi electric SUV is planned for launch. As automakers clamor for available battery cell supplies, many are now making serious plans to bring their own battery production facilities online, a move that should not only reduce costs, but also eliminate supply chain uncertainty. This week, Porsche became the latest automaker to announce its own plans for in-house battery production, with a generation of a new subsidiary called Cellforce Group. It will use this to design, engineer, and produce high-performance battery cells for its range of high-performance electric cars. The Cellforce Group, jointly owned by Porsche and Custom Cells, will supervise the construction of a new planned production facility that says will produce a minimum of 100 megawatt hours of battery cells a year. That might seem like a small amount, but remember that Porsche isn't a high volume automaker. So the number of batteries it needs to produce is far smaller than for any other Volkswagen Group brands. Sticking with batteries, we learned this week that Panasonic sold all of its stock in Tesla earlier this year, netting it in nearly four billion US dollars. Panasonic says the sale won't affect its relationship with Tesla or its commitment to Giga Reno's production facility. But what's interesting here is that Panasonic has also confirmed this week that it's paying very close attention to Tesla's pilot production of 4680 cells. And Panasonic has stated that if Tesla's initial tests are successful, it's ready and willing to make substantial investments into Tesla's tech. And while its sale of Tesla stock earlier this year may be unrelated, we now at least know that Panasonic has several billion ready to invest. At which point, that stock sale makes total sense to me. Clever move. If there's been one automaker we've watched progress through this year like a bad B-movie plotline, it's Lordstown Motors. And if you watched recent shows, you'll know that the company's future has been looking increasingly bleak in the last few weeks. This week, it got another nail in the company's coffin when Camping World, a company that stated just six months ago it would be working with Lordstown to provide service, maintenance, and roadside assistance to Lordstown Endurance customers, confirmed that no, it was no longer going to be working with the company. While Lordstown had implied a deal was on the cards, we learned that no actual deal was signed with Camping World. Even if Lordstown said earlier this month that it was, quote, still in discussions with the retail chain. We would love to see Lordstown have a great future, but right now it's looking extremely unlikely. Following in the tyre tracks of its Autonomous Investor Day in 2019 and its Battery Day last September, Tesla CEO Elon Musk has confirmed that Tesla is getting ready to hold an AI day in the next month or so. Just like its two previous investor days, Tesla will use the AI day to highlight some of the major changes it's been making in recent years to its machine learning system it uses as the backbone of its autopilot full self-driving beta 
system. Tesla has just launched Dojo, the world's fifth most powerful computer, which it's using for neural network AI training. And it says it can carry out one exaflop of calculations per second. If you're interested, that is about 1,000 petaflops, or about the same amount of processing power that 74,000 NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti's could produce. Just think of all the Dogecoin you could mine with that. Talking of AI on autonomous vehicles, Volvo announced this week that its all-new Volvo XC90 Recharge, an all-electric variant of the XC90 whose name has not been confirmed, but which I'm guessing will use the same nomenclature as other Volvo EVs, will feature LiDAR and a powerful onboard AI supercomputer as standard. It's all part of Volvo's plan to execute its long-term goal of having zero collisions involving its vehicles in the future. But also, of course, it suggests that Volvo is edging ever closer to full autonomous vehicle operation in its cars. As Volvo's most expensive full-size SUV, the XC90 has been available for some time as a plug-in hybrid, and we're going to be sharing a review of it in a few weeks' time. It is an incredibly comfortable ride. But without an all-electric drivetrain, we've not yet felt able to recommend it. Maybe that'll change, though, with this new fancy model on the way. The Ford Mustang Mark E has been out for a while now, and in case you haven't watched our review of the Mark E Extended Range Premium, you can do so here. I highly recommend you do. But now Ford's higher performance Marquee variants, the Marquee GT and Marquee GT Performance, have received their own EPA ratings. The most powerful Mustang Marquee variants on sale, the Marquee GT, with a standard range battery pack, manages 250 miles or 403 kilometers on a charge, while the standard range GT Performance Edition manages 235 miles, 378 kilometers, Opt for the extended range packs, though, and you'll see those figures increase to 270 miles, 434 kilometers, and 260 miles, 418 kilometers, respectively. And finally, sometimes stories come across our desk at this channel that require some serious decoding, and our last story is an example of that. It tells the tale of ride-sharing specialist Revel, and its recently announced 50-strong fleet of Tesla Model Y ride-share vehicles in New York, and how the service has been shut down by the New York Taxi and Limousine Commission. New York limits the number of licensed taxicabs on its roads, and there was a short-term exemption for electric vehicles. But now the TLC says that rule has ended to prevent making New York's congestion worse. Some outlets had misreported that the TLC had told it Revel could buy gasoline cars instead. But what the TLC meant was that Revel would need to buy out 50 existing taxis, swapping the medallions of those vehicles into its Teslas. As they say, context is king. And while it is a bit of a disappointing end to the story, we're hopeful that Revel will figure it out very soon. And on that note, we are done for the day. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And if you haven't already switched, please consider switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. It is super easy to make that switch. And when you do, you'll be helping New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back soon with more great videos for you all to enjoy. But until then, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.